Although they're much less prominent now, about four to six months ago, you may have seen an influx of a certain video genre involving eerie looking pictures edited like slideshows that may feature unsettling music to add an auditory experience along to what you're watching. Often, these very mildly disturbing pictures were photographs of settings in which something about them felt off to most people watching, as anyone could see if they just scrolled down to any of the comments section on one of these videos. Dubbed liminal spaces, they were of predominantly seemingly abandoned, derelict settings due to the fact that they were missing key components. Dubbed liminal spaces, they were of predominantly seemingly abandoned, derelict settings where since they were missing key components, something about looking at them just felt off, yet vaguely familiar only bolstered by the flat out terrifying music that was put alongside these pictures. What might have been the genesis of this whole artistic movement was a creepypasta titled The Backrooms. Originally posted on April 21st, 2018 to 4 chains X board, with an image of a room with white fluorescent lights on the ceiling and text attached to it saying, quote, If you're not careful and you know clip out of reality in the wrong areas, you'll end up in the backrooms, where it's nothing but the stink of old moist carpet, the madness of mono yellow, the endless background noise of fluorescent lights and maximum hum buzz, and approximately 600 million square miles of randomly segmented empty rooms to be trapped in. God save you if you hear something wandering around nearby, because it sure as hell has heard you." End quote. Once I get past the urge to yell at the people of Fortune, calling them insane, delirious shit posters, I can kind of empathize with and see the mystery of this concept becoming the meme that it did. For those of you who don't know, in video games, clipping is what most engines use to detect collision between objects. No clipping is just what it sounds like, where one just falls through reality into what looks like a dilapidated Sears or where tons of cubicles are supposed to be, but aren't. Personally, I find it interesting that someone could noclip out of reality randomly and into no one knows where, and really gets me thinking. Since the word liminal is defined by Google Dictionary as, quote, relating to a transitional or initial stage of a process, end quote, with its usage skyrocketing recently. I'm assuming that in the context of disused places like these, many of them could be at the first stages of their use, like them just having been built or in the middle of transitioning between one use or user, in between a move, or placing old appliances with new ones, rearranging, cleaning, or whatever the case may be. A certain area not having much to show for itself could be indicative of one or more of these things going on. At first glance, the destinations in liminal spaces may seem like distant, dreamy, almost abstract places due to how the internet immerses us in these surrealistic environments. But after just two seconds of thinking, because that's how long it takes to realize this, it wouldn't take long to stumble upon a liminal space or what looked like one in real life. Any place that didn't have someone occupying it besides someone with a camera could make for a hit on the liminal space subreddit if the photo was low resolution, was dark in most places of the frame, and had the grain kicked up on it, with bonus points being awarded if it has a 90s aesthetic to it. When I wasn't twiddling my thumbs or wasting my life on something, well, wasting my life on something I wouldn't make a video on, I thought to myself, video games could be a liminal space wonderland. And to the prize of no soul, on no planet, in no galaxy, in no universe, in no omniverse, r slash liminal spaces is packed with pictures from video games, with some video games even being about the back rooms. Two games in particular, Gary's Mod and Minecraft, have entire gameplay premises set in and around liminal spaces due to the fact that they're both sandbox games. Any sandbox map made for Gary's Mod could make a whole album of liminal space photos, since if you're playing those games single player, it's just you and seems so empty, lifeless, and sterile because of it. If you take away the animals, villagers, and any other NPC entity from Minecraft, you'll come to find that the game will feel desolate and off to some people. This is because what we're usually accustomed to being there isn't there in that moment, and such a feeling creates some sort of subconscious creepiness that you probably haven't felt before you've experienced a liminal space. But just walking through one of these places and not paying attention to them can seem like just the most mundane, everyday, nothing out of the ordinary activities, probably since you have a goal in mind. 
Like how if you showed a picture of one of these to someone without mentioning it being creepy or not blasting the soundtrack to a horror movie right into their ears, you wouldn't get much of a reaction. While you're on your way to doing something utterly stupid in Gary's Mod, the map in and of itself doesn't seem important to you, while what you're trying to do does. While you're trying to figure out what mass execution method works most efficiently on the villagers you're trying to get revenge on, you don't really stop to take in the land you're doing it on. Yeah, that'll teach you not to give me a dirt block for 10 emeralds, you stupid bastard. Yeah! If you're trying to build a house-sized gas chamber, you take that in, but none of Minecraft's nature. DIE SQUIDWARD! If you take something out of its intended context, the mystery of it only goes to intrigue and dwell on you, and give you a certain sense of nostalgia and vague familiarity so many people in this community seem to be talking about. Even though taking your furniture out of their places to get the sense of a more authentic liminal space might be what your psychologist would define as questionable, and making a part of some office space devoid of any recognizable objects that make an office to get a backrooms vibe, you might get some confused looks. I'd encourage you to go out of your way and find a liminal space and immerse yourself in it, real life or not. Then you'll be able to see what you can do with that signature sense of eeriness.